Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia. Let's talk books. Today I am here with my April wrap up. Um, a little bit into May now, but I still wanted to talk about these books. I read 16 books in April um, and I didn't mean to. <laughs> mean to read this much all of a sudden I was just finding myself going through uh, through books a uh, part of it was probably the stress of this last month but uh, let's get right to it the first book that I finished in um, April was Charming the Prince this is Once Upon a Time uh, the Once Upon a Time series and this is the first book in it but the book is by Teresa Medeiros and I this is my first Medeiros book and um, I it was really, it, it's one of those books that you pick up because it has a ridiculous premise and it's very tongue in cheek and it has a lot of heart. The premise is that there's this girl that kind of like a Cinderella story, her dad marries a woman who comes in with a bunch of kids and the woman, her stepmother treats her really poorly. She basically makes her her babysitter. She's trying to escape. In comes this new lord coming in looking for a wife. And she basically says, yes, take me away. <laughs> she arrives uh, at her new husband's uh, castle and uh, he's got a bunch of screaming children too. How this man, the, the story is that this man, all he has to do is look at a woman and she becomes pregnant, basically. And she's like, well, what did I get myself into? <laughs> it's a ridiculous premise. It's so fun. Uh, I don't even like reading uh, romance novels with uh, children in them where like that's a central theme, but this was so outrageous uh, that it was fun. And it had a lot, a lot of heart. The second book that I finished in April was The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. I read this because I had just finished reading The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Um, I talked about it in um, the, my previous wrap up, but I'll have a full review of that book um, once it releases. So I wanted to read the original material, the material that inspired Silvia Moreno Garcia. And so reading H.G. Wells, um, it's not my first time reading him, but um, yeah, this one was okay. I actually think that Silvia Moreno Garcia improves on the original material. Uh, the premise is that you have this um, island where this man is doing experimentations that uh, clearly would not be looked upon well on in kind of mainland and in most academic societies but uh, on a boat where our main character was um, was his kind of one of his handlers one of his aides that helps him get animals for the experiments I don't want to spoil too much. Either way, it, there's body horror in here. There's uh, so much mistreatment, mystery, and intrigue. I, I liked all of those aspects. So it was a three-star read for me, but I think Silvia Moreno Garcia definitely improves on um, the original material. The next book I finished was Homicide in Hollow Hollow. This is book number two in the Tita Rossi's kitchen mystery series by Mia P. Mansala and I liked this book better than the first one like I enjoyed the first mystery um, this is a cozy mystery so cozy mysteries can be a bit slow at times um, and this one the in this one the pacing was good uh, the development of the relationship was really nice a lot of the drama centers around a beauty pageant in this town which forces our main character to kind of come to terms with her beauty pageant past and the way her mother especially had kind of forced her into participating in this beauty pageant there's just a content warning here because one of the um, beauty pageant judges um, gets kind of, um, he has a reputation for getting too close to the young women and basically being a sexual harasser. Um, that is not condoned in, in the book, but it's something to be aware of. But uh, I really, really had, I thought this was a really fun, cozy mystery and I really enjoyed it. The next book I finished uh, was this juggernaut of 
a book that I buddy read with a whole bunch of really great people. I will list them all in the description. Uh, but this is a collection of essays by James Baldwin, all of them nonfiction, The Price of the Ticket. Um, and you can tell from my tab, it was just, I loved reading James Baldwin. He is an amazing, was an amazing thinker, and I love the way he articulates points that, like, there are things that I've been thinking about that he just comes out and finds the perfect words um, to discuss them. Um, I didn't agree with everything he talked about in here, but I enjoyed reading him so, so much. I know this is a huge book, but because it's a collection of essays, I think it's a great book to to, to have because you can just take these one, one at a time not even in order, um, you know, skip through it, finding the essays on topics that interest you. Some of the essays are just him like reviewing movies, books, plays, so those might not be of interest, but he talks about segregation, about um, anti-Semitism, about the place of black people in this country, about American history, about he just tackles so much in these essays that I think um, everyone should read James Baldwin's nonfiction. I, I really, really do. Uh, the next book that I finished was an ARC that I received via NetGalley. So uh, I received it for free, uh, but with no obligation to even discuss this book. Um, it is a romance novel. It is called A Proposal They Can't Refuse by Natalia Caña. And actually, I will have a dedicated review of this book coming up next week when it releases. And it's a really cute romance novel in which you follow an interracial couple. Our main character is Puerto Rican and she, her family is very, like they own a like Puerto Rican restaurant that they're very proud of that has been in the family now for several generations. Um, and she wants to take it over. She's trained as a chef and she wants to take it over, but her family doesn't trust her enough to take over her restaurant. And then our hero is a whiskey distiller and they share a lot because their grandparents bought this building in the past that then was divided so that one family could do the restaurant and the other do this distillery and now the you know grandkids are in the process of trying to take over these businesses and um the grandparents begin meddling the grandfathers begin meddling and try to force our main characters into a fake relationship I love the fake relationship trope. I just, I really, really do. Um, one thing I would warn people about, the third act breakup uh, can be pretty annoying because it's uh, a lot of miscommunication, right? Around the fake relationship about these kids having those difficult conversations with their parents and grandparents and, and also coming to terms with their past history. Uh, our two main characters had chemistry, have always had chemistry since they were young and they were friends that got along really well. And then uh, the tragic accident that killed our hero's parents really was devastating and he was never the same after. And he pulled away from our heroine. And so they haven't had a close relationship in a really long time. Um, so, um, there's there's a lot of communication in this book that needs to happen um, So I really really enjoyed this book and I'm actually gonna go to the la a launch event for uh, For the book in San Diego and I'm really looking forward to it. So, okay the next book on my list is Witchlings by Caribel A. Ortega This book is fantastic fantastic i have a dedicated review to this book so if you haven't taken a look at it i will link it in the description box it is a book of um, middle grade book in which you follow this young girl seven as she's about to be kind of put into coven young kids young witchlings and when they reach the right age get placed into covens and there are particular kinds of covens with certain magic is developed and all she wants is to be placed in a good coven and she doesn't want to be a spare the kind of leftovers you can guess what happens and then she has to work to bond with the people she has been placed in a coven with and there's a task they have to complete so that they actually get access to their magic because otherwise she 
if they don't close the bond of the coven, um, they end up without any magic. And so they need to get this huge task to feed this monster in order to get it done. I loved all the dynamics, the social commentary, the way everything that happens here is pretty age appropriate. Like you think like, let's not make kids chase, chase monsters and do all of that. But the kind of magic that the kids are performing seems age appropriate within the context of this magical world. The adults are involved. Um, there are loving, amazing parents. There are also really bad, abusive parents. Uh, but our main character, Seven, has a really good home and really good people watching out for her. And I really liked seeing that. Um, also, most of the magic and spells in this book are in Spanish, which I adored. So this is a Latinx, middle grade, magic, uh, book with lots of magic. I just hit all my spots. So this was an amazing read for me. <laughs> next book on my list is The Silence of Bones by June Herr. So this is a historical mystery thriller. Our main character in this book is, um, is a slave. She's been sent to the city. Um, it's set in like Korea, in a historical Korea, in a fantastical historical Korea, <laughs> um, in which um, she's the slave to the police. And, um, and, and in this world, the men can't touch women and they find the dead body of a young, wealthy, high class girl. So our main character is the one that's in charge of like handling some of the body. As part of the process, she's really standing out to the chief inspector as somebody who really knows what she's doing, who makes good observation, asking the right questions. So he kind of begins mentoring her a little bit and treating her probably better than slaves typically get treated um, here. In the process though, our main character is looking for her brother. That's why she's agreed to this. She's kind of uh, allowed her uh, herself to be a slave in, in this city because she wants to find her her brother who left years and years before and she thinks he's dead and she's just there to find his grave and kind of uh, you know get closure well there's lots of intrigue in the process you're learning everything the dynamics of this world the politics the social makeup um, and this is where it was a little bit too much. I feel like this book had a little bit too, too, too much of all of that. It's dark and gritty. If you like dark, gritty mysteries, you will probably enjoy this. I thought there was just a bit too much of the historical, fantastical, social, political layers for a mystery um, because uh, there are chunks of the novel in which the mystery kind of is sidelined. And I wanted a little bit more of the mystery to be centered but that's just me it's personal preference it's a solid book i think there's an audience for it i'm definitely going to read more jane her because uh, uh, they've got two other books one that uh, recently came out and that i've heard really excellent reviews of so i cannot um, wait to get to it next i read native son by richard wright uh, in part because James Baldwin has a review of, of Native Son in which he is, it's a negative review of Native Son, and it actually caused a rift between Baldwin and Wright, um, that review. And so I wanted, I was really curious and I wanted to read it. And let me tell you, Native Son is the devastating, difficult book to read. Um, you're following a character who, the main character is a black man who, is not a likable character. He was not meant to. You're not meant to. Wright is doing that explicitly. Uh, he, he's giving us commentary about, you know, the society, the racism, um, all of that. And it's a condemnation of American society, but with an, un, an extremely unlikable character who commits murder, gruesome murder multiple times, it's hard to read. I had to stop reading it at some point, look up all the spoilers. Usually when a book is making me very anxious, I look up all the spoilers and then I can go back to the book, finish reading it and enjoy it. Well, I found all the spoilers of what happens in Native Son and I still had a hard time reading through all of those scenes. There's violence, there's 
sexual harassment, uh, thoughts of sexual assault, there is an actual sexual assault, it, racism, uh, just it is a book you have to know what you're getting into going into this book. I'll just leave it at that. The next book I finished was, was Body and Soul, The Black Panther Party in the Fight Against Medical Discrimination by Alondra Nelson. This is an academic book, but um, I do think that people who are interested in the Black Panther Party and in like medical discrimination, issues of medicine, would be really interested in it because the book focuses on the Black Panther healthcare clinics that they established all over the country. It was part of their mandate. Every Black Panther chapter had to have a clinic that uh, offered free services to the community. And this was a really important part of the project because in establishing these, these clinics, the Black Panthers were criticizing the American government for the way it overlooked Black low-income communities. Um, fascinating. It also talks about their sickle cell program. The Black Panthers started the first ever national testing of Black people looking for the sickle cell gene. And uh, the American government was so afraid of a lot of this critical healthcare work that the Black Panthers were doing that they actually end up co-opting this testing um, of people for the sickle cell gene. Um, so the analysis on here is really excellent. You also get to learn um, more about some of the dynamics of the party. Um, so for example, the members of the Black Panther Party received healthcare through their clinics, but they, they, they were also really interested in um, controlling the spread of STDs and keeping membership healthy. So they had what they called a freeze list where members of the party, when they tested positive for something like an STD, would be put on the list and given treatment. So you could call up the party if you were a member and say, hey, uh, is this person on the freeze list? And then uh, you would get told, yes, they're in the freeze list. And then you would know that this person is, you know, that you shouldn't have sex with this person. They're in the middle of treatment for an STD. Or they would tell you no. And then it's a uh, green light, go ahead, have sexual intercourse with this person. Um, and I just find a lot of that um, really, really interesting. So if you're interested in it, I think the book is worth picking up. Uh, it can get uh, a bit academic at times, but if you're interested in the topics, it's worth it. Next book I read was Crashing Into Her. This is book number three um, in the Love on Cue series by Mia Sosa. And this one was just, a, it was a five star romance novel for me. In it, you're following the main friend of the main character book number one, <laughs> um, Ava. And Ava is, um, is a big girl, a, a fitness instructor, and she is very confident. Oh, I loved Eva's confidence. She doesn't pull any punches. She doesn't take anyone's shit. She is a confident woman and she encounters her best friend's cousin, who she, there's clearly like great chemistry between the two of them. Mia Sosa is an excellent writer when it comes to creating chemistry between the two characters, even when they're not touching. It's just the banter, the jokes, um, the body movements, the way she describes them, and the way, just, it's, I love the way Mia Sosa writes. Um, and I loved this book. Um, it's kind of a kind of a second chance romance. The two of them had had a one night stand. That's how the book opens. The, the two main characters had a one night stand, and now they're in the same city in Los Angeles, living really close to each other, and they can't help but being attracted to back to one another. On top of it, Eva Eva um, wants to explore becoming a stunt um, double. And the main hero is a stunt, uh, stunt double and coordinator, and so she begins taking classes uh, at his with his business, and so uh, all of that is um, just really cool. This is just a really great, uh, great romance novel that I highly recommend. Next, I read on tyranny: twenty lessons from the twentieth century by Timothy Snyder. And I have to be honest, I have two taps because there were two things I found interesting in this book. The rest of it seemed very like basic, <laughs> like, um, you know, it's 
how to avoid tyranny, uh, right? It's like a how to avoid tyranny book. Um, the first bullet point is do not, do not obey in advance. Number two is defend institutions. Beware the one party state. Like it's really basic stuff. It's, it's, and for me, it's more of like a good conversation starter or like a coffee table book rather than a book you're gonna pick up uh, for like deep thinking and analysis. I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> The next book I finished uh, was Frostburn. This is book number seven in the Mercy Thompson series by Patricia Briggs. This was a five star read for me. And it's so rare that book number seven in a series is this good. Like usually these long running series, like they ebb and flow. They can be good, bad. And usually they're just, you know, somewhere around a three stars. They're solid books and people reading the series will enjoy them, but not really, you know, excellent or anything like that. But I thought this book was really, really excellent. And I've really been enjoying the last couple of Mercy Thompson series. In fact, I think this is now one of the favorites, my favorite series I'm reading. In this one, you have, you start off with uh, Mercy. Mercy Thompson and her stepdaughter are on their way to like do Christmas shopping. And all of a sudden, the entire wolf pack, there's werewolves, the entire werewolf pack is kidnapped and Mercy has to engage with that. So it's a lot, this is a book that's focused around the werewolves, although for most of the story, and then at the tail end of the book, you get the vampires come in to play a critical role. Uh, so the, in this world, there are werewolves, vampires, there are um, all kinds of other magical creatures, ghosts, everything. If you've read this series, you know, I just, I really love this book and I like, it's got plot, plot after plot after plot after plot. I loved it. <laughs> loved it a lot. And next on my list was another book I loved. This is Gunpowder Alchemy by Janie Lin. This is book number one in the Gunpowder Chronicles. I've been meaning to read this book for a long time. Uh, and it, it just lived up to that. This is a historical romance set in ancient China during the, the Qing Dynasty. And so it's a world that is in flux. It's, it's, it's in the process of changing. Um, there's a lot of discussion of Europeans, Westerners and Americans and, and all of that uh, trying to take over China. There's a lot of discussion of the decay of the Qing Dynasty. And it's super, super um, steampunk. Super, super steampunk. Like, if you like all the steampunk elements, you're gonna get so much of that in here. Our main character, uh, Jin, Jin So Ling, um, comes from a family that has been like exiled uh, from the court. Her, her father was like head of engineering for the emperor. But um, because they lost against the, the Western powers, he, he and his family, he was killed and the family's exiled. Um, and now she, Jin So Ling, is trying to, she was just trying to sell an old trinket her, her father had given her to help her family. Her mom has become addicted to opium. And so Jin So Ling is the one who is in charge of the family. And in trying to sell this trinket that she thinks is valuable that her dad um, had given her, she gets pulled into a lot of court intrigue and um, Qing Dynasty di uh, politics. It's amazing. Now, the ro in this particular book, the romance is light. Um, I, I think the romance is meant to evolve over the course of the entire series. Um, so, so we don't get the, that happily ever after in here necessarily, but it's not, it's not, a, it's not a sad, unfulfilling ending. It's a very fulfilling, like, ending. So, like, if all you do is read the one book, it's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, but I am definitely going to keep going with this book because I loved it. <laughs> Next on my list is uh, Destined for an Early Grave, num book number two in the Night Huntress series by uh, Janine Frost. So I was really big into going back into urban fantasy series this month. It, it was just, it was hitting my soul. I, my soul needed some of this. Um, this book was, 
Uh, okay, it's packed full of plot. These urban fantasy books, if you're a plot-driven reader, urban fantasy has got all the plot for you. It's just one thing after another. Um, the thing with the, uh, the Night Hunter series that I'm being a little bit iffy on is that the last couple of books come in with like dramatic changes, like a backstory has been established in the series. And the last couple of books throw in a wrench into it where you're like, no, actually the backstory you thought occurred a particular way, it was not quite that way. Here's this other thing you didn't know happened. And that I find that kind of annoying. <laughs> like, I want a book to progress, not always to be like going back. I still like this book. I, I liked the dynamic between our two main characters. Our main character is a vampire hunter who is part vampire herself and uh the main hero is a vampire an old powerful vampire uh, and i love the dynamic between the two of them and then how they interact with the kind of friends and the circle they have around them put it there i'll <laughs> put it that way okay second to to last book i finished in April was an amazing book, Better by Akweke Messi. Uh, Akweke Messi is like an autobi author for me. I have loved all of their books that I've read. They just, they write, their writing is just amazing to me. And this one is a prequel to uh, Pet. It's a middle grade, maybe young adult book. Um, I have a full review of it, so I'll link it below. So here I'll just limit myself to saying that. Uh, so in here you're following the mo mom of the main character and pet better as she engages with the world in which she lives. We know the world is going to end up a certain way because that's the way it's described in pet. But here we get the backstory of the way the world was before and how it begins changing. So there's a lot of discussion of activism and what everybody's role is in an activist world, in a world, in a changing world. Um, there's a lot of discussions of the importance of art and um, I just, I loved all of it. I, I, I have no negative things to say about Bitter and about Ikeke Messi's writing here. Next, I read A Cowboy to Remember by Robert Weatherspoon. This is book number one in the Cowboys of California series. And I just really like this book. This was like a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's a kind of modern retelling of the Sleeping Beauty um, story. The main character is a well-known chef uh, that right now has a, t a TV show uh, where she shows recipes and she's just, she's really well known. Uh, at a holiday party, she gets pushed down a set of stairs and she loses her memory. Like all of her memory is gone. So in order to try to help her recover some of that memory, she goes to um, the ranch where she grew up basically with this family that she grew up with. She doesn't have any family of her own left. Um, she was an only daughter and she lost her parents really young. They didn't have any siblings and her grandmother passed away a few years before the story begins. And so what she has is her fan family, her, the friends she's made, and then this family that she grew up with at the ranch and but she's lost her memory right so she she's she's they remember everything there was clearly a big falling out between her and the hero uh whom the he she has been in love with the hero for like her entire life she's always had a big crush on him and he has rejected her in the past uh and now regrets it he regrets it now they're thrown back together except she doesn't remember anything about their past history the past hurt and so he's having to atone for something that she doesn't quite remember <laughs> i liked all of that like that all kind of worked for me uh the end is a little bit rushed uh but it was a satisfying ending and i'm really looking forward to reading the rest of the cowboys of california series if you've read rebecca weatherspoon's uh self-published works though one of the things shannon um and i were talking about shannon over at that Po, i'll link her channel down below is that uh, Weatherspoon can be a lot more like 
uh, out there. That's not the right phrase. She takes a lot more chances. There's a lot more sex and, and kinkiness in her self-published books. Um, in this book, this is traditionally published, there's less of that. It's much more of a sweet book. There's still sex, but um, they are smaller more limited scenes of that in here um but i still i still really liked it i thought it was really sweet really lovely i liked all the characters and i can't wait to read the rest of the series because i kind of fell in love with some of the side characters here that i know are getting their own story <laughs> and I, especially the older brother i cannot wait for his story so uh, i'm looking forward to reading uh the rest of that so that's it. Those are the, what, 16 books I finished in um, April. A lot of really good reading though, so much. no regrets here. If you've read any of these books, um, let's talk about them down in the comments section. Or if you're thinking about reading any of these, let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.